Hey, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. Alonzo here with Matt and Christy. We have survived another week, and so have you. And so let's talk about uh, the news and happenings and all the stuff that's going on. Uh, kicking off, as always, with uh, Marquise. Yes, we have a, a few, not a ton. Um, also, hello from the beach. Uh, I, I <laughs> moved into my new home uh, right on the ocean. No, uh, it's you too have hot. A fake ba- yeah, you have a fake background that moves, though. How yeah, did you I know. do that? How'd you manage uh, that? They have video ones. They have video ones, but it looks really good because I got a green screen. Very uh, nice. Yeah. So uh, uh, both all, both Hallmark channels are smack into Christmas in July this weekend, so that's where my comes. Nice. From. This is my house. This is my dining room. That's <laughs> no, it's not. That's a somewhere back that's here. a background. I don't believe it. <laughs> Christy it's is magical. happy in reality, and I envy that. It's true. Um, okay, so go ahead with Matt Marquis, please. Yes. All right. Hang on. Let me uh, share my screen. Uh, and okay, hang on. Let me get to the slideshow part. Uh, okay, so um, this first one is. Um, oh, hang on. Sorry. Sit there. Great. Oops, went too far. Uh, I'm having trouble today. Uh, you okay. don't want a slideshow though, right? Because if it do a slideshow, then it like moves on its own without you right. wanting it to. But now it's stopped. Okay. So yeah. we're good. Um, okay, so this is uh, the clip. I'm opening this up because I sent you this news story. This is the picture we're using at the top. Um, we'll get to the news story about the uh, boat theater in Paris. <laughs> Right, um, you can get little boats. Uh, the thing that I, that the reason I'm pointing this out, um, do you see this guy right here? Can you see where my mouse is? He's like kneeling. Uh-huh. He's like standing up. He's standing like, up. What the hell, dude? Well, if he's in the back row, I know, but he's gonna fall out of the boat. Oh well, there is that. And, and he's also cares. blocking the view of the person who's behind him in the boat, which is just. Right. Like, oh, that's right. That, that is, is super a uncool. Move. <laughs> now, okay, I'm confused because all these boats are identical. Do you go to the theater and they assign you a boat and then you go tootling out to your spot, or is this just for like anybody who has a boat to come up like it was a drive-in theater? Or maybe they it's that you have to have. You may only, only if you have a certain type of red and white boat. <laughs> Clearly, with a little roof. Right. No, this is not like one of those mega Trump boat parades in Florida. This is not that. <laughs> you, you don't bring your own boat. They have no, these boats. aren't fast boats. Yeah, you, okay. you, you bring your own boat. And I'm sorry, B-Y-O-B. you don't. You don't, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't bring your own boat. They have like X number of boats. And then they have a bunch of seats all around the shore where you can sit and watch from there as well. You buy a ticket and they, they put you in a boat. Oh, I would love to like paddle a swan boat out to the middle of a lake right? somewhere and watch a movie. That would be also awesome. like. What is this woman pointing at? I don't know. Off to the left. Who's Look, honey, oh. there's, there's the screen. Look, birds. <laughs> anyway, it looks it looks really cool. This is like an artist rendering of it, but it looks really cool. And yeah. they're they're doing this on the Seine, and they're going to show like two movies. And I'm, uh, one, I'm wondering if this the st- the screen still we're seeing is of this movie that we showed at Outfest last year that was about a gay water polo team. I can't quite tell, but it looks like it's a bunch of dudes with towels next to a pool. Okay. Just a thought. There you go. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's, so. that's, that's our photo. That's, so that's, we just did the news segment on it. They're doing a floating boat thing. It's called Cinema de l'eau. Yeah. Uh, Vic de yeah. l'eau. <laughs> I mean, is it so obvious that they had to go with a boat picture? Like, I mean, like a water-based movie? Oh, like, well, you know. Right? Thematic. Show something be... from Lord, Lawrence of Arabia, like or, or, or Titanic, <laughs> right? Or Dune. <laughs> uh, right. right. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, this picture came in from. Uh, let me grab the name. Um, this is from a news story. Uh, it's the. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm just a mess today. Uh, okay. Let me get. It to says my... intermission. Wear your mask, and yes. there are people standing in front of the theater. Wearing masks. Right. So this is and from Cody Lynn Berry. Um, she, uh, Cody Lynn Berry, uh, this is the old theater where I live in uh, Benton, Arkansas. After seeing Matt's marquee pictures, thought you guys might like to see this. Uh, the Royal started its life as the IMP Theater in 1920. Cool. Uh, cool. So, yeah, that's the beautiful Royal Theater. Uh, okay, next up is uh, David An- Dave Anderson, who sent us some pictures a couple weeks back, um, sent us some pictures from the Heights Theater, uh, which he says just opened at 25% capacity. It's a beautiful theater built in 1928, now fully restored. Uh, they 
even restalled a pipe organ that's played before the Friday oh. and Saturday night movies and when they're showing silent films, a very fun place to go. Uh, so that's one of the pictures. There's another picture of the other side that says, see you mm. soon. Uh, and he says, uh, you can buy concessions from the attached Dairy Queen, which is right <laughs> next door. Nice. Right? Right? <laughs> um, I had to blow that picture up because it was kind of a small picture. Uh, and then as an aside, I don't know that this is right next door, but in Minneapolis, and make no mistake, Dave, this is on my list of places to visit should I ever get the chance to go to Minneapolis. Uh, Psycho Susie's oh. Motor Lodge, <laughs> right? Uh, drink tiki drinks, say goodbye to Sadness. Uh, okay, un unless there is another theater in Minneapolis that is right next to a Dairy Queen. I think I did an event at the Heights years ago oh. when my first book came out. Um, and it's if it's the place I remember, it's a gorgeous old theater. That's cool. really cool. Yeah, very cool. So you would know if Psycho Susie's Motor Lounge would be right next door. I don't know that I went to, but now I feel like whoever showed me Minneapolis was asleep at the wheel. If they didn't yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right, next up. Uh, so this came in from uh, Twitter user Memets, and he says that these are old and not really anything to do with current events. Um, these are pictures of the Nighthawk Theater, uh, a group called uh, Saint Flashlight, which is a couple of artists that they use theater marquees, among other things, to kind of do uh, street poetry as, uh, or just poetry. So let me move the picture, out, the <laughs> video out of the way. Um, and you can see that there's some of these that are like a name that movie, right? <laughs> um, but some of these are kind of like, this is uh, haiku, right? Klutz's followed love, running down city sidewalks, tripping on meat cubes. That's really cute. The Nighthawk is in New York. Is it the night? Okay, is it the New York Nighthawk? There is okay. a Nighthawk in New York. Maybe this is that one. Uh, maybe so. So um, yeah, so there's some fun ones on here. So uh, I like the one know. at the bottom right. It was also a, a haiku. Clever detective thwarts hate group with subterfuge. His afro stays tight. That's nice. really good. <laughs> Guess that nice. movie. That's, that's really. <laughs> I like that. Those are fun. Right. Uh, Vi the other one right above that, violin screeching, star killed, killed off in the opening, suspense down the drain. That's right, really, that'd be psycho. These are, all, these are all really cute. In need of yeah. cash, a sexy crew concocts a plan to exploit a score of Wall Street businessmen. All right. Anyway, <laughs> who's that? Too many syllables, but still Yes, good. but still, it's a, it's a poem. Yay, good job. Good job yeah. using your marquee for good, Nighthawk. There yeah. you go. Uh, so, and that's all this week. Not a lot of stuff. So, oh, really? Um, that's okay. it. That's it. So uh, to everybody watching, um, if you want to see more marquees, uh, send them in. Um, we were low this week. Uh, I've been amassing some funny ones. So at some point um, that aren't necessarily, you know, that are kind of vintage. Um, I talked about some out of the uh, True Facts uh, books from National Lampoon uh, a few weeks back. And then there's some others that I've been picking up. So at some point we'll do like the grand wrap up of just hilarious movie marquees that are, that are uh, typically like fun movies next to each other. So. Oh, good. And then yeah. also they don't have to be movie theaters. Like our friend Tom Ford has sent us ones from the Will Turn, which is a concert Hollywood venue Bowl. here in LA. That's at least a theater. Yeah, that's true. I, I sent you one from the automotive uh, yes. driving museum. <laughs> that I thought counts. that was uh, <laughs> Crystal Lemire. Lemire. <laughs> Lemire. Um, let's do news. Yes. Because the big news, news well. of the week is that Kanye West is running for president. <laughs> <sighs> no, he's not. <laughs> I mean, no, he's not really, but it's hilarious. And I guess he did a big, long interview with Forbes magazine in which he says that he, um, he's done with Trump. He's taken off the mega hat. He's mm. done. And uh, he, see, he sees the error of his ways. And he wants to really run for president. I, but he might just be messing around. Who knows? I can't even enjoy this as like a kooky celebrity story because I just feel like we're just we're watching this sort of slow motion implosion of a talented person who is also a person who is clearly grappling with mental illness. And uh, So just, wait, are you it, talking about... Kanye or Trump? Yeah, no, <laughs> I said talented. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. I mean, he talks uh, about having I mean, been diagnosed with bipolar disorder in this article. So. Right. And, and so I just, you know, when he starts talking about how, like, when he, when he says that people shouldn't get vaccines because they won't get into heaven, you know, it's just like, oh, man, what's anyway, going on here? Kanye's running for president, um, and he'd like your vote. Um, so that is one thing. We have a... a 
Okay, so let's talk about the Oscars really fast because mm-hmm. one thing that was sort of newsworthy this week is that Hamilton is not going to be eligible for the Oscars. Hamilton's and why? apparently Hamilton's apparently not a movie. Hamilton's apparently a filmed stage performance. So it might qualify for an Emmy and because it plays on Disney Plus, which is on your television. Anyway, all I know is that um, according to Academy rules, it's not eligible for an Oscar, which is too bad. But, but if it had what? opened so, theatrically like it was originally planned to, right. would they still say that? That's a good question. Yeah. So Lynn Manuel, right? Lynn will have to wait for his EGOT. EGOT is still on the horizon for, right. for Lynn Manuel Miranda. Um, but along the lines of, of theater news, Actors Equity, which is the union that handles like the tens of thousands of stage performers and and behind the scenes stage managers, is allowing two theaters in Western Massachusetts to stage in-person productions. And these will be the first ones since the, the pandemic began like four plus months ago. Um, they're in the Berkshires, um, two different theaters. One's doing Godspell and one's doing Harry Clark. So one is inside, one is outside. They're gonna do it with like distancing protocols. Mm. Hmm. I well, and, and, and then, and I, I guess it's on your list that Broadway is sort of officially closed until 2021 now. We right? did that last week. Oh, we did? Okay, sorry. That's old news. It's it still can, weighing on me. What can I tell you? <laughs> um, can you guys hear that noise in the backyard? No. No. Okay. Okay. Maybe only I can. All right. New Jersey movie theaters are suing the state, saying oh, yeah. that the forced closure, <laughs> while other businesses open, is a violation of their First Amendment rights. It's, well, um, it's, it's AMC, Regal, and Cinemark, and they are, right, uh, is NATO suing on their behalf? But they're, they're so. anyway, Could they are be. suing I, the state. They are correct in that it is ridiculous that churches are open right now because they have been shown to be like the most sort of dangerous place of contagion because not only are Keep people going. close together, but they're singing and they're doing all these things that make the droplets go. And so the, the point of the lawsuit is to say, if churches are going to be open and you're telling us we have to be closed, you're violating our, our First Amendment rights. And it's like, well, that's not completely wrong and at the same time the solution here isn't sue so that you can open it should be the fucking churches should also be closed i also like the idea Hi. i've seen a couple people uh point this out if churches are going to be essential businesses then tax them well yeah there's that too of course it's just pandering it's pandering to the religious right it's transparent yeah. it's obvious yeah. um so that is a thing that's happening the state fair of texas is not happening this year. This is very sad. Where will people in the Metroplex get their deep fried Twinkies on a stick? Where am I going to get my fried butter? This is a heartbreak. I know. The corny (laughs) dogs all cried out as as one and were silenced. (laughs) Yeah, no, the Safer of Texas is a big, big deal. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's like... You know, it is uh, a, a real show place for a lot of students uh, who do, you know, agricultural stuff, for artisans who get to display their work, for obviously the wonderfully terrible fair food, you know, the the the, the Texas OU game, right? Isn't that what, yes. what happens? Right? That's the only reason I've ever gone. Well, actually, SMU played once at the Cotton Bowl during the, the fair, yeah. but I've never actually gone to the fair. And so also, does take place then. and there's also a big football game during that between two of the HBCUs in the area, and I'm forgetting which ones now. But Grambling anyway, and Southern. Uh, that sounds right. Yes, mm-hmm. a lot is tied to the State Fair of Texas. It's a huge thing, and um, yeah, this is like, I mean, I'm glad they're doing it. It's the right choice, but it's like this is where we are that we had to cancel the State Fair of Texas, and that is not something that Texas does lightly. No, no, right, and and the mayor, or not the mayor, the governor, Governor Abbott, finally had to like grudgingly say, "Hey, wear a mask." After for so long saying, "Let's open." Yeah, it's apparently he's awesome. got a he's got a lieutenant governor who's even who's even more insane a Trumpy than he is, and so yes. like he, that's who he's been having to, to sort of keep up with. His name is Dan Patrick, not to be confused yes. with the Dan Patrick who is the sports talk mm-hmm. radio guy, right? Um, or Danica along, Patrick. Right along those lines, Fantastic Fest has been canceled this mm. fall in Austin. And that is a really fun thing as far as genre films. And what they said was that unlike other film festivals that have, you know, had an online presence instead, like South by Southwest showed their films online, that so much of the allure of Fantastic Fest is the the communal experience, the in-person experience. And they're not going to try to recreate that. So they're just going to push it to next year instead. 
Yeah, because I mean, the thing about film festivals, as you guys know, you've been to them. It's like, it, you know, the, the being in the room with the movie and the other people watching it is a big chunk of it. The room but where it happens. The, 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 the room where it happens. But like the talking to people in the lobby afterwards and going to the cocktail parties and just like people gathering and going to get a meal afterwards, like that is so much of where like the, the festival is really happening. That's where that level of interactivity, of socialization, of of swapping opinions of networking whatever it is you you do at film festivals um you know so yeah the 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 viewing of the film is a big chunk of it but there's so much of it that is so specifically about congregating right Right. the schmooze the energy of it right people you wouldn't meet otherwise exactly Um, so along those lines and this is sort of a big deal in, in our world is that Toronto, Telluride, Venice, and the New York Film Festival are all collaborating this fall on one big film festival because of the virus. They just announced this a couple days ago. The exact details of what that will look like haven't been laid out yet. I think they're calling it the Voltron Fest. (laughs) <laughs> so I know Ven- uh, Venice is a place that you have been, Alonzo, because you're fancy pants. But um, and, and we've been talking about they had hoped to still do an in-person thing. They are still clearly... doing an in-person okay. thing. Are they still? Okay. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. They, they, I mean, they, there are some changes this year, like the all the virtual reality stuff is going to happen online. It used to be on its own little island. Um, they do a big uh, section of the festival that is restored classics, like new sort of 4K restorations and stuff. And those are all happening in both. Bologna, uh, and the Venice competition slate will be a little smaller than usual, but it's still happening. They're still doing it. Um, and then Toronto has already announced, you know, that they're going to be doing some screenings and then some online stuff. So that just leaves Telluride and, and New York. And I mean, I Telluride is such a like, I mean, yeah, on the one hand, it's isolated, but on the other hand, it's so from what I understand, I've never been, but like it's, you're packed together in this tiny town. I don't know how you do that unless you like invite half as many people or something because that, that, you know, I don't know how they pull that festival off. And Telluride has gotten bigger and bigger. It used to be a tiny little sleepy thing and now has become really a destination for launching award contenders even before yeah. Toronto. Yeah. No, all four, all, what's interesting about this sort of sign of unity is I think what it means is that in the past, all four of these festivals are duking it out for Oscar movies for like they they this is like these four festivals collectively are pretty much where award season starts and I think this year they're like all right we're gonna work together and we're gonna divvy them out <laughs> you know like we yeah. each get this the and and like and that way you know there's not we're not gonna compete over them we're not gonna repeat them we're just gonna launch them and be done with it and like that's how we're gonna get through this crisis yeah I'd kind of love think. to know who managed to like from which festival who managed to talk them all into working together, Mm -hmm. right? Like that's somebody who... uh, True, because Toronto and Telluride especially, like they were throwing down, like the only reason that I go to Venice every year, the reason that they started like sending me was because Toronto and Telluride got really vicious about premieres where Toronto said, if you premiere at Telluride, we're not screening you until the second weekend. You know, if you want that prime first weekend slot, then you have to say no to Telluride and premiere with us. And then Venice is before either of those festivals. And they've become, they've launched a lot of like Spotlight premiered there and Gravity and Birdman, like a lot of the the best picture winners of late started there. And I think they were sort of like, we're still in this conversation as well. And because the rap had never sent anybody to Venice, they started bringing me in. And I've been going every year for like, five or six years now but that's what that came out of i think was because the toronto telluride beef got so ugly over this very thing this this whole like who's going to get the the awards bait first you know I, you know as we're talking about these film festivals i immediately start thinking do you think the people who organize the venice film festival are seeing that news out of paris about the little boat based <laughs> experience <laughs> of thinking Oh, mm. <laughs> mamma mia. <laughs> Cinema du gondola. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's so easy. It writes itself. Right, right. The, um, the sing-along with the gondoliers. <laughs> that seems really fun. Um, so we've got a bunch of movie release dates that have shifted again. Um, Shocking. Every week, every week we have some as the landscape keeps shifting. Um, so St. Maud, which was supposed mm. to come out next week, the right. much anticipated, long awaited St. Maud, A24 has just taken it off the schedule entirely. Like they haven't even pushed it to a different week. They're just saying that's thrown in waiting. the towel. 
I mean, it's also, I think, practical, you know? That's what I mean, everybody should do, I think. <laughs> I think so, too, because, like, 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 Tenet is, you know, as of this recording, Tenet is still set for August 12th, but they've had to change that, like, three different times now, so. As this recording at 10.59 a.m. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so, Train to Busan, that sequel is going to be supposedly in theaters August and then streaming in 2021. But again, who knows? The tra Train to Busan Peninsula mm -hmm. is supposedly then. Um, Universal and Blumhouse have pushed Forever Purge from July 20th, I'm sorry, July of this year to July of next year. Aww. I want to be Forever Purge. The purge. <laughs> I, is, that, is this now the final purge? Is it ever the final purge? I don't okay. know. I, I, I look, just, until they make Purge Christmas, Dave White will not be fast. <laughs> um, Halloween Kills, which is the sequel yes. to, to David Gordon Green's Halloween, is, has been moved from this October to next October. And then Candyman was supposed to be September 25th and has now been moved to August, I'm sorry, October 16th. October okay. 16th for Candyman, which makes more sense. Wait, which closer to Candyman. <laughs> Come again? Repeat that. Candy man. The man of candy. <laughs> He's coming uh, right before Halloween. That makes sense. What about Antebellum? Where, is, where are we with that one? Do you mean Lady Antebellum? No, no, no. no, the, no, no. no. We're the getting Janelle to that later. <laughs> oh, the Janelle Monet movie. I have not heard anything about that. Have you? Oh, okay. I, uh, that I must be getting bumped back because I think that was supposed to be August or so. Oh. I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, since, since, we, since we're close to it, let's talk about the Lady Antebellum fiasco. So Lady uh. Antebellum changed their name to Lady A, right? Mm. Thinking, we didn't realize when we named ourselves that it could p potentially be offensive and, and hurtful to people because it's, a, you know, a celebration of this romanticized notion of slavery era South. Mm -hmm. But there's someone named Lady A already, and she's <sighs> been Lady A for like two decades. She's a blues We didn't singer. spend the 20 seconds on Google to find this out. <laughs> right. So... In, in all of their infinite wokeness, Lady Annabellum is, is now suing Lady A so that they can be Lady A. So they are a white country band suing a black artist to take over her name. <laughs> this, the phrase is performative wokeness, right? Isn't oh, that oh. The, the term? Why for not this? just cha change your name to White Lady? How about that? <laughs> I, I don't know. Lady, Lady Anne. Lady Anne. No one. Is there a Lady Anne band? Auntie B. <laughs> Auntie B. No one's taken that. It's brilliant. So anyway, that's the latest shitty thing on that. Mm. Um, what else? So this past week, I didn't go to it. I don't think either of you guys went to it, but they had an actual press screening. Yes. And it was at a drive-in. They, they screened Relic, mm -hmm. which maybe we can get to next week. I hear it's good. They screened it at the Vineland Drive-In where several events are taking place in the next few weeks. And they sent out a press release saying, hey, come to City of Industry, pull your car up, you can watch Relic. Yeah, that was my first invite for that. And then I've, I've since gotten another one that's going to be like in the parking lot of the Palladium. Have y'all gotten this one? Oh, I've in heard Hollywood? about that, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, the, this, is the, this is the new normal for film critics. They're going to start trying to have these press screenings at, at drive-ins, uh, you know. It's the bathroom where it all falls apart for me. You know, like the idea of being inside my car and bringing my own snacks and all that stuff, fine. But the idea of having to get out of the car, stand in line for the bathroom and not be too close to other people, be in the bathroom and not too close to other people, that's, that's where it falls apart. That's why you yes. go in an RV. Find a there you yes if i had an rv i'd park it in back <laughs> so as not to interfere with anybody's sight line and it'd be all good I, to so, go so you know the one of the challenges i mean i i get that like certain movies right like halloween totally understand why you bump that back to next year in the hopes that everything is going to be cleared up and people can go back to theaters because that movie will not be the same at home right and we'll talk about this a little bit later there's a movie we're going to talk about this week that i after I watched it, I thought, wow, I would have liked to have seen that on the big screen. Um, but I don't know that going to the drive-in quite captures that same experience. Well, right? our friend our friend Tara McNamara, who I 
carpool with to screenings when that sort of thing happened. She lives down here near me. Um, she was on with the flick a couple times. She went yeah. to this screening and she said it was like kind of hard to see a lot of the stuff. And like there were details that like, like information on post-it notes that was kind of hard to read, like things that were probably important. And that like, I guess the ending is really strong. It's a really impressive, cool ending. And like that just didn't register when you're sitting in mm. your car. It can't movies be the in, same. The sound isn't the same. The, yeah, the, the sa- screen's not the same. Movies in the dark are, are, that are dark films, I should say, are tricky to pull off at the drive-in. Um, I, I remember years ago for my birthday, I went to the drive-in to see The Crow. Uh, and the, the, the movie started before the sun had gone completely down. Oh. It was kind of like, what's even happening? Yeah. I, I've had to stop watching screeners out in my backyard on the laptop because if it's dark, I'm like I'm like this trying to block out <laughs> the light around my screen. Yeah, I you know I would be I find myself like thinking I would want to put the top down on my car uh, if I'm at the drive-in, but maybe that defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, or, or like, you know, I have a friend with a pickup truck and we would always sort of, you know, park it backwards and we'd, you know, he'd have an air mattress back there and we'd all sort of sit there and watch movies. But you That's can't why you get the either. old Subaru Brat that had those oh. seats in the, do you remember the Subaru right. Brat? Yes. Right? The that had the seats the, in the back the that faced backwards? <laughs> yeah. No. But if you're wearing a mask, maybe it's okay. Anyway. Um... Many sports related things that I will zip through because you guys don't really care that much, but I think that they're interesting in that they are like a harbinger of things to come. Um, um, David Price, who's a pitcher for the Dodgers, said he will not play at all this season. Baseball is supposed to begin in like two weeks. July oh, 23rd, you... there's supposed to be baseball. By the way, did you see the story that they actually canceled COVID testing at Dodger Stadium for a couple of days so that they could yes. play an intramural game? Yes, they're doing inter-squad games at Dodger yeah. Stadium, yes. Um, Priorities, yes, people. Yeah, no, I mean, but I don't think there's, it will all have been for naught because I really suspect that this is just not going to happen. As, as superstars pull out and as more and more players test positive in these various leagues, I just think we're not going to have any sports at all. So Buster Posey well, is not going to play all season long. He has twins in the NICU. Um, Joey Gallo, Mm -hmm. who is 26 years old, outfielder for the Rangers. Anyway, um, has, he's 26 years old. He has COVID. You know, you can be young and an athlete at the peak of your game and, um, and get this. Uh, Carlos Vela, superstar for LAFC, LA football club here in Los Angeles says he won't play in this big MLS tournament. He's one of the superstars in the league. So I think more and more you're going to see people setting that tone. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I, I, you know, it's interesting that you talk about that because where my, you know, similar to what's happening with the movie business, you know, I start thinking like, okay, well, if you can't have anyone in the stadium, then why would you bother having anyone play the games? And then I remember, oh, right. It's about the broadcast rights. Yeah. Right. That's where the money is. And so right. all of these teams, it's, you know, it, it, and, it's survivable for the owners because, you know, you still get money from the broadcast rights for having a game go on. Um, you know, everybody else who works the stadium, who cares, right? Um, but yeah, like, I don't think anyone should be playing anything. It doesn't seem like it's particularly healthy. What, what, Report, reporters what, are there in the press box. Reporters are actually doing the job yeah. as, I mean, like, as much as distanced. Like maybe tennis. Right, you're not near anybody on tennis. Right, what's the what's the like the video game baseball equivalent to like John Madden? Could they just do that? There's an MLB baseball game, yeah. Right, you could just, just do, do that. It, do it virtual. You could. Um, have you seen these Tom Hanks interviews? We're going to review Greyhound later on today, but Tom Hanks has been doing the the interview circuit to promote that, and because he has had COVID himself, naturally, Mm -hmm. he keeps getting asked over and over again, you know, how do you feel? What is your advice? And Tom Hanks being, you know, the the voice of reason for our nation when we need him, basically says he has no respect for people who don't wear masks, who don't distance. Um, He was in the Today Show, the AP interviewed him at several places. And he says, the idea of doing one's part should be so simple. Stop disappointing America's dad. Right. Would that it were so simple. 
um, <laughs> but it's not. So Tom Hanks is trying to help steer our, our nation in our time of need. Um, here's some good news. So Hair Love, the Oscar-winning short from Matthew yes. Cherry last year, which was so charming, is being turned into a 12-episode animated series on HBO Max called nice. Young Love. So if you liked that, that story and that family, you're going to get more of them coming from Matthew Cherry soon. Awesome. Cool. That is a good story. Um, Did you see what, this uh, news? Well, I don't think we talked about it last week about the secret movie that Zendaya and John David Washington have shot. No. No. What's yeah. That? That's cool. Yeah. There's some some movie they've some thing that they've shot relatively recently. Um, that's all I know is they shot something. Cool. Let's follow up on that. Let's I know Michael Bay is getting ready to shoot his movie that is about COVID in Los Angeles. No thanks. Yeah, I know. I mean, how do the explosions look on Zoom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does shit blow up and it like spreads the COVID everywhere? I don't know. It's got a um, mask on it. Along those lines of, of what's in development, there's going to be a Wonder Years reboot, but from the perspective of a black family in the 60s in oh. Montgomery, Alabama. Oh. Yes. Okay. Wonder Years from the other, other perspective, but um, Fred Savage is going to direct the pilot, which is a nice bit of connection to the original sure. series. And he's directed so much television. I see Matt the, looking around. The oh, music it, rights are gonna be insane on that uh -huh. show. <laughs> so, I mean, do, you know, the title of The Wonder Years at the time harkens back to this kind of golden age, right? Um, and I, is that valid for a 60s? I think it's referring to the time of one's life when one is filled with wonder about the world and stuff. I, I don't think it's necessarily well, about again, life. Uh, you know. I, I look, I, I think, I think if, if you're an adolescent, no matter how shitty your surroundings, no matter how fraught things might be, you know, you are still growing up and learning and discovering things. Okay. And so I think that's what the wonder part refers to. And there's I didn't really watch the wonder years, so I don't know, but I'm just well, guessing. I, I'm not actually even sure that this new series is going to be called The Wonder Years. But well, yeah, the idea of looking back with some nostalgia is what that is about. Um, Alonzo, Brooks Brothers has filed for bankruptcy. <sighs> Tell me about it. I, you, like, Dave and I are like, do we have to stock up on Oxford shirts now? Like, what the yes. hell? Yes, hoard them like toilet paper. Because who the hell <laughs> else is selling to ample gentlemen and selling them the fine, fine clothing that Brooks Brothers does? Not many. Right. Well, have, have you gone online to stockpile? Not yet, but it's but we've been thinking about it. Uh, I bet it's going to be a sale. I bet there'll be I'm a sale to like, get rid of it all. I'm hoping that bankruptcy doesn't mean going out of business, that it just means they're restructuring and they're going to get bought by some other conglomerate or blah, 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 you know. But uh, but yeah, if, are, if they are indeed going out of business, we're going to start hoarding. Do it. Um, Shepard Smith is going to CNBC. Do you guys see this? Okay, good so for him. So Shepard, Shepard left Fox News Channel in October and has been very candid about his feelings about how the message there evolved <laughs> over the years. Um, and he, in, in a sea of right-wing opinion, he was often, you know, the voice of clarity and mm. actual information. Um, he's going to have the 7 p.m. Eastern time slot at CNBC and it will be actual news. So that would I wonder, be I, I wonder if he is like NDA'd from writing like a really juicy Fox news tell all. I don't know. I know he had a non, he had a non compete for a little while. And so right. now that by the time he gets there, that will be uh, over. Yeah, there probably is an NDA. I, I, I mean, you'd have to imagine that that's what they set up. So mm. I, yeah. Yes. Oh, I forgot one more piece of uh, development news that just came out today. So Matt Reeves, uh -huh. who's directing The Batman, yet yes. another Batman, is teaming up with Boardwalk Empire creator Terrence Winter to develop a Gotham City police procedural for HBO Max. GCPD? Is that what are they calling GCPD. it that? Yeah, because that's, there has been a GCPD <laughs> comic book. And, you know... Again, it's like, I don't know if there's any kind of, what, what, if any sort of unified universe is happening with the DC shows, but like Renee Montoya, who I imagine is probably a major character on the Batwoman show on CW, that's like an interesting character out of GCPD. There's, you know, Harvey Bullock, but it's like, you know, we just had Gotham, which was about the pre-Batman. So that was mainly about young Jim Gordon and, you know, the I don't know. 
I, I, th- I think it's, I think that the, the, you could pretty much, we have a cool idea for a TV show and we'll call it Gotham City and that'll like, that'll be the hook to sell it and to get people to watch it. But we can just do whatever the fuck we want because you can, like, it's not, there's not a lot canonical there. You just go like, you're like, you know, Gotham's a dirty town and you know, you run from that. <laughs> and there's uh, a guy in a bat. <laughs> right. I, you know, right. Cause now's the time we need another police show. That there makes is the that, cops yeah. good, right? I mean, one of the things that's fun about uh, Birds of Prey, um, the Harley Quinn movie, is that the cops in that movie are clowns, and mm. and you and I remember kept thinking in that movie like, man, no wonder this city needs a Batman. Those the Gotham except, City cops are terror. Except for Renee Montoya, who winds up joining forces with, with the right. Birds of Prey. Except, <laughs> except for like a handful, right? But for the most part, they're awful. Um, and so you kind of like, I, I almost want to see that take on a show. Um, you know, but we mentioned Batwoman. They've recast Batwoman now. Right. Um, and it's a black actress uh, who will be playing Batwoman because... Um, Ruby Rose. Uh, Ruby Rose left. Um, so they've recast that role. So... Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't know that I'm all that interested in a Gotham. Same. I don't. Care I, I, I am interested in in Matt Reeves and Terrence Winter coming up with something. So, but you know, I, again, I just hope that, that they're like cannily using the name to like make it an easy sell, but then doing something interesting with the material. We'll see. Um, Alonzo, I know you saw this because you tweeted about it. The Tandy Newton Vulture interview. Whoa! Oh, that's Let's a good one. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. The many fire, writers, and she is just candid and brutal. She has really. zero fucks to give at this point. <laughs> She's just like telling you, telling you, telling you everything. Yeah, like going all the way back to like her breakthrough movie when she was a sixteen-year-old flirting. I've seen uh, flirting. It was so good. Young Nicole Kidman. Great, great there? movie. Sequel to The Year My Voice Broke. Yeah. John Deegan, Deegan, the director of that movie, uh, totally like groomed her and molested her as an underage actress. Um, you know, uh, 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 Amy Pascal, she's not, right? Right. She's not uh, black enough to be and in And Sony didn't, didn't want to cast her in Charlie's Angels because she, she was, yeah, she wasn't black enough. And she didn't think that audiences would buy her as educated, even though she'd gone to Cambridge, you know, it was just like, Ah, so but yeah, like all the woman stuff. Oh, the, the crash. There's a whole crash story that will like curl your hair. So yeah, she's just not holding back anymore. She doesn't care, and it's great. It's a great interview. Uh, Alex Young did it with her, and uh, she's just like telling you all the things. I love, and I love how confident she is in it. Beyond telling on others, she's also quick to to be confident about her own abilities. Yeah. And at one point he asked her like um, something about a particular movie and says, you were very good in that. She goes, I was good in that, wasn't I? <laughs> no, I mean, but but it, it doesn't come off as vain because she talks about, oh, well, this is when I had my eating disorder and, you know, all these other sort of things. And, and I think it's a trajectory. Like I remember reading the Jane Fonda memoir. I think for a lot of actresses, they are sort of, you know, they become insecure and why not in this industry that is constantly telling them they're not enough of whatever, you know? Um, And I think there is something really powerful about women who find their own voices and come to understand that like, you know, they can steer the ship and, and, and when they really believe in themselves. Um, And so, you know, she basically talked about like, yeah, I went through this period where like, they would tell me to do it and I would do it. And uh, later I would feel bad about it or whatever. And now she doesn't have time for that shit, you know? And, uh, and so it, it's exciting that she has reached this level of confidence where she's like, no, I, you come to me cause I know what I'm doing. And if you don't like it, or if you're going to ask me stuff that is make me do stuff that's degrading or whatever, I'm, you know, go fuck yourself. Yes. She also, well, along those lines, she also drops a whole lot of F-bombs. So I like that about her. She curses. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so we should talk about some, some sad news. Mm. Naya Rivera. Glee star Naya mm. Rivera is missing, and mm. I, I, I believe presumed dead at this point. She was in a boat with her little boy who was four years old, and they both, what, they both fell in the water in Ventura County, in a lake in Ventura County, and the boy got back in the boat, and she did not. Yeah, the kid was wearing a life preserver, I think, and she was not, and at this point, she's presumed dead, but they are, I assume, still searching. Yeah. Oh, very it's a very sad story. 
everything about it's horrible. And um, we had some very sad deaths this week, including the great Ennio Morricone. Yes. Who was what? 91 years old. Yeah. The legendary and, composer. And insanely prolific. Yeah. Yeah. And range. I mean, think about mm. how different, like, the good and the bad and the ugly is from Cinema Paradiso, from sure. The Mission. You yeah. know, so yeah, everything yeah, yeah. is very, very different. Um, Charlie Daniels. <laughs> Not as much range as a musician. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, he died at 83. Yeah. And... Oh, also, this is a very a really sad story, too. Um, this Broadway actor, Nick Cordero, yes. who oh, was man. Su suffering from coronavirus and folks were following his story. Um, he died. He was only 41. Um, he had wanted, he'd been nominated for a Tony for Bullets Over Broadway. I guess he was really good in Waitress and Rock of Ages and yes. a Bronx Tale um, and was like six foot five, this giant guy. And the people kept wanting to cast him as, as like a, a bad guy. But he also like had this gentle soul and he loved to tap dance. <laughs> And so, I mean, you, you read the story about his, the, the whole sort of way the disease went through him. Oh, like, yeah. It's brutal. This brilliant, brilliant dancer who has a leg amputated and brilliant singer who at the end was waiting for a double lung transplant. Like, I, that people are still fucking around with COVID. It's like, it, it, yeah, it, it'll, it'll kill you. And along the way, it will do like major damage. So if it doesn't kill you, it's still going to fuck you up royally. Yeah, so he was only 41. He, he and his wife and their one-year-old child had just moved from New York to L.A. That's a heartbreaker. It yeah. is. Um, I'm trying to think if I can end on some happy news. I don't have any happy news. I'm sorry. Do you guys have any ha anything good happen this week in your lives oh, that you want to share? The, the secret movie. They've announced a release date for the secret movie with Katie Holmes. It's now July well, That's 31st. not keeping it much of a secret if they made nope. the announcement. Indeed <laughs> not. Uh, I'd like to think that I manifested it to the universe and willed it to happen. Uh, yes, Katie Holmes and um, uh, who's the guy? Oh, not Mark Blucas, the one who's the uh, anyway. Yes, so that's happening July thirty first. July will be reviewing it. Did you read the secret, Alonzo? Do you oh, know what no. the secret is? No. I saw <laughs> part of the Oprah episode about the secret. And I was like, well, that's ridiculous, and moved on. But uh, the idea that they have turned this sort of like sort of nonsense pop psychology, you know, thing into a movie, I just find hilarious. I just think it's to funny me, that it's called the secret. Dare to dream. Mm. What does that mean? Well, there were probably other movies already called The Secret. Oh, right. so they had well, Josh, Lucas, Josh Lucas. Josh Lucas. From thank Sports you. Night. Yes. Right. Because part of the problem is if you call a movie The Secret, like that sounds like it should be a horror movie, right? I mean, mm -hmm. or yeah, something nefarious. Right. No, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's, what The Secret smacks up to me is back in the 80s when uh, Marianne Williamson was really kicking into gear. Uh, her whole thing was basically, if you have AIDS, it's your fault for not loving yourself enough, you know? And so this, what, to me, when you have a thing that's all like, good things happen if you just believe in them and you just, you know, send your intentions out into the universe. The flip side of that is always, well, if something shitty is happening, it's your fault because you didn't clap enough and Tinkerbell died, you know? Like, <laughs> and, and, if, if, if everything in the universe is at your fingertips, if you, like are you know wanted enough or whatever then then the inverse is if you are suffering if you have cancer if you know you have a financial setback or whatever you also caused that and it's like mm, go fuck yourself if your vision board is pretty enough, <laughs> exactly. here's what here's what the imdb blurb is on the secret dare to dream a widow struggling to get by meets a stranger who subscribes to a philosophy of positive thinking <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, the trailer is hilarious because it's not even about like, how can we take the ideas of the secret and manifest them in a fictional form? No, no, no. This is a movie in which a character actually does believe in the secret. And when he like teaches somebody else to do so also, their life gets better. Like It's basically an infomercial. It's directed by Andy Tennant, who did Hitch and Fool's Gold and Sweet Home Alabama. Can't wait. And fools rush in, and it takes two. It's a it's a theme. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, anyway. and by, the other good news is that Schoolhouse Rock is now on uh, Disney Plus. Oh, yeah, but Amazon Prime, I think I read, had dropped Mister Rogers. Oh well, like, maybe the the, whole, the deal they had with PBS <laughs> ran out. Right. And, hmm. 
Mm. We will review the secret when it comes out. For sure. That'll be fun. That's, that's a good, happy place to end, putting out positive vibes to the universe. Exactly. Yay. I'm all about it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us at BeFast all day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast all day. We've got our TV recaps happening over there. Other fun, exclusive stuff for members. Do, do we have a winner in the Schumacher poll, or is that still? Flatliners. Pending? Flatliners. Okay, so we're gonna. So because our members demand that we're watching Joel Schumacher's 1990 Flatliners, we'll have that review going up next week. So uh, until next time, bye. bye.